Welcome back. We're moving on to the second section of the presentation, New Options in the Treatment of Negative and Cognitive Symptoms of Schizophrenia. We covered negative and cognitive symptoms of schizophrenia as per the positive and negative syndrome scale. And we're moving on to the NMD receptor and the dual neurotransmitters, glycine and glutamate. I'm going to start here with a crude drawing of the NMDA receptor to show you some of the characteristics and structural aspects of the receptor that appear to confer novel properties that are likely to be very important in schizophrenia and also other disease states. The receptor is novel in that it requires two neurotransmitters, glycine and glutamate, to activate. And once it activates, calcium, a very important ion, enters into the cell along with sodium, and potassium leaves. This is an ionotropic receptor, meaning that ions flux through the channel. It is novel in the sense that it works in conjunction with other receptors as well to indicate significance and to create change and learning over time. Some of what causes that to occur is the calcium that comes through when the channel is open. And the other aspect of the receptor that's very important is the fact that magnesium can sit inside the closed channel and block that channel from opening until the cell membrane becomes more and more charged by activity at other receptors. In other words, other receptors have to be stimulated on this neuron and start to charge the cell membrane before magnesium can get kicked out of the channel and allow glycine and glutamate to activate the channel and open it for calcium to enter. Interestingly as well, it turns out there's also a location within the receptor that PCP ketamine and probably nitrous oxide can all attach to and block the receptor from the outside of the cell. And these medications that act as anesthetics and dissociatives have a lot to say as regards the negative symptoms and cognitive symptoms of schizophrenia. It's no accident that these medications can mimic the negative symptoms of schizophrenia quite clearly through decreasing the NMD receptor activation and function. We'll come on to this uh, drawing later as I go on, but for now let's move forward to explain that uh, the word NMDA stands for N-methyl-D aspartate, and that is actually a very specific research molecule used to activate the receptor, while there are other uh, molecules that can activate the NMDA receptor. It was named particularly for this molecule. And this molecule in general, as I said, is activated by both glutamate and glycine. But of these two neurotransmitters, only glycine has shown promise in the treatment of schizophrenia. And that's due to a specific issue, which is that excessive glutamate activation of NMDA receptors appears to have the potential to hurt neurons to a process called excitotoxicity. What apparently occurs is that excessive glutamate activation at these receptors can cause too much calcium to enter the cell and cause too many changes to occur inside the neuron. These changes can cause inflammation and can even upregulate, turn on suicide programs, programs we call apoptotic protein programs that can actually cause cell death. It's one of the ways that cells may protect themselves from damage, but in this circumstance, clearly it's something to be avoided. It appears, though, that glycine can help activate the receptor in a safe manner. NMD receptors are involved in essential brain functions at many different levels, not just at schizophrenia. In general, we know that they are involved in immediate and long-term memory processing and general cognition. They affect our personality, range of emotion, our ability to problem solve and plan. They are clearly involved in personal drive and initiative as well as decision processes and judgment. 
inhibitor receptor actions are so important, in fact, that they have been proposed as the location for a single unit of memory formation or something called long-term potentiation. Um, they seem to signal the importance or essential significance of information being gathered through thought, emotion, and the senses and help us to learn what to avoid, what to approach and increase in terms of behavior. Um, they act in some ways like a highlighter and quality control expert for our thoughts and the relation of our thoughts and emotions to sensory information and ideas, concepts. We seem to mark what is important and help us remember and learn and develop correct conclusions. Uh, NMD receptions would be considered essential to executive function, uh, referring to the decisions, judgment, willpower, planning, and initiative that are so important to making us human and so important to making us effective in the world. It's very clear that NMD receptors help to strengthen connection between neurons by allowing the calcium to enter producing a learning event called long-term potentiation, or LTP. Um, LTP is essentially a fancy term for change over time that occurs uh, in neurons in terms of relation of strength between connections. Uh, these changes lead to memory um, and help us plan and focus and uh, allow us to continue to monitor our behavior and monitor our executive decisions and function. And it's very clear that anything that inhibits NMD receptor function can inhibit learning and memory. And this can be at the simplest level of uh, a medication that blocks these receptors or through genetics that have been found that uh, reduce the effectiveness of the receptor through altered protein form forms. So again, the receptor, very important aspects include the fact that two neurotransmitters activate it, that calcium enters the cell and makes changes inside the neuron, that magnesium sits inside the channel until the neuron receives information from other receptors and from other neurons and potentially from other dendrites and synapses. Uh, before this receptor can open. The other aspect that's very important is that once the receptor is open, it tends to stay open for a while and can actually continue to mark importance of information and, and data that happened in the past to downstream neurons. And then the receptor function is clearly underperforming in schizophrenia, and evidence is overwhelming that both negative and cognitive symptoms are partially caused by NMD receptor dysfunction. Alterations in the actual physical structure of NMD receptors have been shown in research, and alterations in function have been shown. Uh, receptor dysfunction may contribute to the misperceptions and often the uh, false conclusions that occur in schizophrenia. Some of this would be considered to be the positive symptom aspects of the disorder, um, that a personal sense of meaning and importance uh, as far as thoughts and uh, conclusions is altered sometimes dramatically in the disorder. But poor NMD receptor activity also increases dopamine downstream, and this might be part of why dopamine, dopamine signaling is too high in schizophrenia. Uh, thus, the uh, dopamine theory and the NMD receptor theory of schizophrenia are actually completely compatible with each other though the symptom set that a person exhibits may imply that one aspect of this, of uh, these theories is more important than the other in a given person. Blocking NMD receptors actually mimics much of the negative and cognitive symptoms of schizophrenia in anyone, even with intact receptors. If people are given ketamine uh, in clinical settings, what we will sometimes see, often see in them, and, and they will describe to us as a dreamlike quality to their thinking, loss of initiative and poor intellectual cognitive skills. There's loss of planning, 
there can be overt uh, staring and, and prolonged dissociative symptoms, um, decreased facial expression, and even memory deficits after the event is over. This fact led to an awareness amongst researchers that the energy receptor may be one of the most important factors in negative and common symptoms of schizophrenia. But unfortunately, medications that correct this issue haven't materialized so far. Um, and really, at this point, nutrients currently remain the clearest option to protect and improve the function of the NMD receptor in a safe fashion. Glycine specifically is the neurotransmitter that's been studied the most, again, because glutamate in its actions at NMD receptors appears to be right uh, near the threshold where turning up its action can actually cause damage to neurons. Uh, glycine is often considered to be a limiting, a less limiting neurotransmitter and uh, as such may uh, potentiate function without causing excessive uh, activation and excited toxicity. It works in conjunction with glutamate. Uh, but uh, does not seem to cause the trouble. Studies targeting glycine site on the NMD receptor have repeatedly shown improvement regarding the negative and cognitive symptoms of schizophrenia. A number of different uh, agonists or activating molecules have been looked at, including glycine itself. Uh, serine also has been looked at, and one of the medications that, uh, excuse me, one of the nut nutrients that we'll be discussing today, uh, sarcosine, has also been looked at. Glycine is also a building block for glutathione, which will be discussed later in this talk, glutathione being a, an essential amino acid that's been shown repeatedly to be at very low levels and, cost, and possibly causing uh, damage through those low levels in uh, persons with schizophrenia. Low brain levels are implicated, and uh, this uh, natural antioxidant may protect the brain and the body. So we'll be moving on to section three of this talk regarding sarcosine, uh, its characteristics and action, and research findings regarding its efficacy and uh, potential use in schizophrenia. Thank you very much.